Bruce Lawn. Damson Idris, the star of Snowfall, came out in a recent roundtable discussion and said as he was preparing to play some of the darker aspects and episodes of Saint in the show that he called on the devil. And then what happened next is pretty shocking. This is not clickbait, all right? So let's get into this story. I'm going to show you guys exactly what he said, the context in which he said it in, and then we're going to look at a clip actually from Michael Knowles. It's going to give us some reasons why he would even do something so foolish. And then I actually have one Bible verse towards the end of this video that's going to glue all this together and make it make so much more sense and how it's actually applicable to a lot of us. So Let's jump into this video. So here's the video. It says, Drama Actors Roundtable. And it has all these actors, everybody playing from The Sopranos to The Mandalorian to Succession and Snowfall. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys a bit of context because this is about her asking a question if anyone's kind of played darkness or dark roles. And the lead actor who played Dahmer, Jeffrey Dahmer in the huge Netflix series, answers that question. And then that's when uh, Damson chimes in and, and kind of drops a bombshell. So check this out. And be honest here, if anyone had any sort of hesitations, reservations going into uh, them. So got, she's talking about reservations playing a dark character, right? I definitely I didn't want to play any more bad guys. I was like, not doing that anymore. Uh -huh. And then of course I read the scripts and uh, I don't know. I just, I, I felt, I didn't, first of all, I didn't know the story and, and the case of, of Jeffrey Dahmer. And uh, I, I think I was just, yeah, I was pretty upset about uh, just the, 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 the amount of times that the police department and the justice system failed mm -hmm. to stop him, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and it was going to be an incredible challenge, but I felt like the message of the, the piece was, was worth it. Mm -hmm. So again, pay attention to the language he's using, felt compelled, the message of the piece was worth it, pushed myself. These are the sorts of language that he's using as playing this dark actor, uh, as playing this dark character with, with Jeffrey Dahmer. Now watch what uh, happens when Damson, uh, again, the character that plays uh saint frank uh franklin saint on snowfall watch what he says when he when he chimes in on this stuff is going to um come home with you mm -hmm. um yeah yeah even if it's not you like like you're, you're physically going through something so your totally. body has a, some sort of sense of memory there's something going on what is so they're at, talking about the, the characters that they're playing the actors that are playing are going to come home with them okay and here comes a bombshell. That it was a strange, like, yeah. it, nothing. It just, I just felt like I was really naive about it in the mm -hmm. past mm. and, or that it was a decision. It was uh -huh. a choice. Like I refused to sort of indulge that these boundaries get blurred mm -hmm. and, um, and, and there isn't really a way to, um, keep that from happening. There isn't a way to keep that from happening. I've discovered. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I was, I remember sometime we do 10 episodes for my show and in this last season, um, I was hitting a block, right? I, I was like, oh, I'm not doing it right, right? So I went in the corner and then I was looking at the wall and I was like, come on, devil, come on, devil, right? Come on, devil, come on, devil. So if you guys aren't familiar with Snowfall, it is a show about cocaine flooding the streets of urban America in the 80s. And Franklin Saint is loosely based on a character, Free Ray Ricky Ross. I'm not going to give you all the details. It's a very interesting story. And so there are aspects in the show where Franklin Saint starts as this innocent kid who's trying to figure out his life, so on and so forth. And then over the course of the seasons, he grows extremely dark. I I'm going to spare you the details of some of the stuff that happens in the show, but it goes extremely dark. And he's saying, come on, devil, come on, devil. Okay? Come to me, like, come to me. Come on, devil, come to me. Bro, no, no, no. But again, just stay with me. Watch till the end, okay? I had to do something like crazy, right? Had nightmares for a month. So it does come to it or after? off though. After. Like I had nightmares every day. Like I just felt, I felt the energy. Oh, interesting. You know, and I had to pray and do all this stuff to like get rid of it. And you know, you call your mom up and you're like, bring me back to life. And mm -hmm. that stuff is real. Darkness. 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 You don't say. <laughs> you don't say, my guy. That stuff is real. And I don't know why anybody in their right mind will say, come to me, devil, come on. And then what does he say? What is the bomb show? He says he has nightmares for a month straight. He has to pray. He has to ask, ask his mom to bring him back to life. That stuff is real, right? But stay with me. We're going to get to why. This sort of stuff happens in just a minute. 
That stuff really is real. I think I was kidding myself as well. I think, you know, when I see my kids, that's off, it's gone, and, you know, bath time, bedtime, all the stuff. And nah. Then, like, I'm not sleeping well, or there's something, you know. So the limits that these actors push themselves is, is really astonishing. But check this out. Michael Knowles recently did a video about this, and he was specifically talking about Dylan Mulvaney. And he says something really interesting, and he gives us a brief synopsis of where this comes from in this field. Okay, and some of us may not know this. And again, stay till the end. I'm going to give you guys a Bible verse here in a second. Check out, check out this breakdown of, of, of acting. Okay, listen. Of modern acting theory. This is something you wouldn't understand if you're not familiar with modern acting theory and what happened. But modern acting theory represents a major psychological break with old forms of the theater. And I think it actually leads people into all sorts of craziness and helps to explain what the guy is actually doing. Modern acting theory and technique began in America in the 1930s with something called the group theater. Lee Strasberg was probably the most famous of these acting teachers who, who popularized the method. Uh, you, you would know Lee Strasberg from Godfather Part II. He plays Hyman Roth. He's the Jewish gangster. This is the business we've chosen. Modern acting theory. Okay, Michael Knows is breaking it down for us. Modern acting theory. Theory, and he's going to get into some of the details on what makes this different, okay? Because what, what he was doing on, on stage and in his classes was probing so deeply into the psychology of, of his students and of his actors that he would, he would push buttons, rip off old scabs, uh, uh, create and, and, and uh, play on various passions and lusts and desires, even if they were not healthy for the individual. Darkness. Darkness. I remember... When I was in college at Maricosta, and I think I took an improv class, and then I was like, man, that acting seems kind of interesting, right? I kind of always knew I wanted to do something in media, and I remember this stuff started coming up. And I remember they would, they would, they would talk about how you would make yourself cry, is that you would go up there, and you would, you would, in, you would think about the deepest, darkest moment of your life and those were those are real emotions you're seeing. And so the way that modern acting theory has shifted drives people into the deepest, darkest parts of who they are to really try to become one with the character. In the old school of acting, the classical school of acting, uh, uh, actors have never been particularly respected by society. They've often been lumped in with prostitutes and criminals. But, but in the old school, at the very least, an actor could go out on stage with a costume on, play his part, and then take the costume off. In the new school of acting, the costume is, is not on the outside. That's sort of incidental to the performance. Yep. The costume is on the inside. Yep. The, the costume, the, the, the thing that uh, demarcates the character uh, and, and delineates the character is in the, the actor's own psychology and frankly in the actor's own soul. That you're bending your own desires such that when you are on stage you really are feeling the things that the character is supposed to feel. You really are thinking the things that the character is supposed to think. You really are desiring things that the character is supposed to desire. And so it, it is much more transformative of the person. And depending on how well you can control this sort of technique, can really warp an, an, an individual's sense of self. Uh, Lee Strasberg was not the only guy working on Okay, and so I'm, I'm sure you guys know of, uh, of actors. Someone mentioned Heath Ledger, where the darkness of a role that they play ends up just doing a number on him. And that's what that round, round table was about. And so it's not shocking to me to, to hear this from that world. It is shocking to hear someone say they, I mean, they were literally summoning the devil, asking the devil to come. That's some spooky stuff, man. But here's the part that I find really interesting. And here comes the, the, the scriptural tie-in, okay? Is that we know that there's darkness out there. We know, people who aren't in Christ know that there's, uh, energy, a force of darkness out there, and, and and some of them are even trying to tap into it and all this kind of weird, goofy stuff. We know that, which which would mean, one, we also know that the, the God is real. If, if there's a devil, then God is real. That's a quote Andrew Tate said, ironically enough. But oftentimes, we never take the self-inventory to understand, scripturally speaking, what does it mean to be in allegiance with Satan, that it's not just in doing spooky things like that was pointed out in this video, right? That that it, that is often more subtle than many of us can imagine. So let me take you guys to a Bible verse. In uh, this is First John, chapter three. Now this is a crazy verse. Check out what this says: Little children, 
Let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God was appeared to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seen, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. Now, before we go any further, I gotta show you something interesting. Hey, you wanna see something crazy? Over 50% of the people who watch this channel are not subscribed. And out of the people that are subscribed, less than 10% actually have their bell notification on. So do me a solid. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure the bell notification is turned on so you don't miss anything we got going here. All right? Peace. And smash that like button while you're at it. Let's go back to this Bible verse. Okay. Children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he who is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. For God's seed abides in him and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. By this, it is evident who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his neighbor. So this verse is telling us that if in your life, whether you are a follower of Jesus or you're not a follower of Jesus, if you keep making a practice of sinning, you keep practicing sinning like it's some sort of extracurricular activity. It's some sort of sport you're taking on. It's a new skill you're learning. If you make a practice of sinning, it's not just the people that are practicing Satanism that are children of the devil. It's not just the people that are doing witchcraft that are children of the devil. It says here, whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, okay? And whoever, it is evident, who, verse 10, but this is evident, whoever are the children of God and who are the children of devil, whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, okay? And then it narrows it down. This is what the beautiful part is. As he's talking about practicing sin, not practicing sin, and then it even goes more specific. It says, nor is the one who does not love his brother. That. If you make a practice of sinning, which is breaking the commands of God, and it is something that you invest time in, it is something that you invest resource in, it is something that you love to do, you're a child of the devil. It's not just the folks out there, okay? And then it says, and whoever does not love his brother. That is fascinating. That is fascinating that not sinning and also falling short in areas that you should be doing things in, like loving your brother, loving your neighbor as yourself. And so I think we could easily look at an actor and say, man, that's some spooky stuff they're doing with the method acting. And wow, how scary. And I can't believe they did that. But how often do we, do we, do we look in a mirror in situations like this and say, well, according to scripture, do I make a practice of sinning? Do I make a practice of rebelling against God? Do I make a practice of living my life onto my own glory and my own thing? And am I actively waging war on my sin? Because here's the deal. You need to make a habit of killing your sin or your sin will kill you. If you don't make a habit of intentionally killing your sin, spooky things will happen to you as well. Sometimes those things that you that you think are just little little foxes in the garden, as Solomon talks about, it's the little foxes that destroy things. Those things that, those are little, little things, little n n nasty little things that are just getting you. Those are the things that can often destroy us, destroy our lives on this side of eternity. And if you're not in Christ, destroy you in experiencing the afterlife, right? So repent of your sin, repent of your sin, repent of your desire to wage war on the things that God has laid out for you to do to live his ways. Put your faith in Jesus and live God's ways, right? Live God's ways. And that's not just for 
the actor who's doing spooky stuff. That, 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 everyone needs that. Not just the people that are in Hollywood. Not just the people that are in the music industry. Not just the people that are wilding out. Not just people in the cult. We all need to do that. All right? So those are my thoughts on this. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you want to help us further contextualize the gospel through this platform, consider becoming a premium partner for as little as $5 a month so we could stay brand-free, answering only to you, and never, ever having to make goofy commercials like these. Our friends at GenuCell Skincare have exciting news to celebrate in 2023. Using Manscaped during my showers after workout has given me much more confidence. And that's where mud water comes in. True Classic has got your back. All thanks to the sponsor of today's video, SayMine.com. Established Titles is your opportunity to earn the title of Laird. Lady. Object credit approval rates range from 7.99% APR to 19.99% APR, included 0.50% auto pay discount. If you don't want us to make ads with brands you don't care about, sign up for our online community for as little as $5 a month to keep us independent and ultimately answering to you as our boss. You get all sorts of benefits like daily replays of our after party streams, exclusive access to our Discord community, and early access to our podcast interviews, all starting for only $5.